In the previous video, you saw how you could use the style attribute to change the appearance of the text on your web page. We could apply the style attribute to individual elements, for example each paragraph, to change the colour, the font, the font size. This method was known as inline styles. I'm going to show you a different way of achieving the same effect, arguably a better way, because using the method I'm about to show you, we can create styles which can be defined once and then used many times on the same page. And this makes changing the appearance of the page much quicker. Before I can do this, I need to set up a section of my web page where I can define the styles. I'm going to create a head section. Let's make this window a bit bigger. At the very, very top of my page, I'm going to have a pair of tags. Head and slash head. Underneath this section of the page, I'm going to have another section called the body section. Body and then at the very bottom, slash body. It's quite common to structure a web page like this. Anything inside the body tags is visible. It's the stuff you can see inside the browser window. Anything inside the head section, anything in between these two tags, is invisible. This is where we're going to define our styles. We can also put other things in the head section, like program code. We'll see that in a later video. There's one final thing I want to do. I want to enclose the entire page inside a pair of HTML tags, like this. The purpose of these tags is to tell the browser, here is a HTML page, here is a web page. Some people will argue you don't need these at all, but it's standard practice, so I'm including them. Now one more thing I'd like to do before I start defining my styles is to take out everything I did in the last video. At the moment my heading is red Comic Sans MS size 35. Let's get rid of all that. I've also set the colour of each paragraph using a style. I'm going to get rid of these as well. So I've basically taken a big step backwards. Let's save the page and see how it looks. Black and white again. Right, now let's set up some styles in the head section. In here, I'm going to use the style tags. Style slash style. And within these, I'm going to define the heading one style. Color, orange red, a semicolon, and then font family. Let's try Broadway this time. Another semicolon, and then the size of the font, font size. Notice that I'm not using double quotes this time, I'm using curly brackets. Let's save it and see how it looks. I've got the Broadway font, but I haven't got the colour. Can you spot the mistake I've made? Yep, I've spelt colour wrong, or should I say I've spelt it correctly. C-O-L-O-R is the correct spelling for CSS. Let's try that again. And there we go. I've defined the heading style in a different place. Now you might be wondering, why bother? Well, the reason is this. If I use the heading one tags somewhere else on the page, they'll adopt the same style. Down here, I've got other great nursery rhymes. Let's make that heading one as well. Instead of the paragraph tags and the bold tags I've got here, I'm going to use heading one tags. Save it. Reload. And you can see it's the same style as above. Imagine I've used the heading one tags all over my page several times. Well, I can change them all in one go 
just like this. Instantly, that change has happened to every single heading one. I can do the same with the paragraph tags. Let's set up a style for the paragraphs on the page. Within the style tags, P for paragraph, and then within curly brackets, the style I want to use. So all of my paragraphs are going to be violet, aerial font, size 20 pixels. Let's take a look. And if I ever want to change a characteristic of all of my paragraphs, I can do it in one place. So I can quickly change the appearance of the web page very, very easily. Now, at the moment, all of the lines in my nursery rhyme are the same colour. And I've decided that from now on, I'd like all the lines to be the same colour. I think if each line is a different colour, it's not so easy to read. So these lines might as well all be the same paragraph. I'm going to change the HTML so they are all one paragraph. You can see I've got an opening paragraph tag here. I want to keep that. And I've got a closing paragraph tag here, which I also want to keep. But I'm going to get rid of the rest of them. Let's see how that looks. Of course, it's all on one line. The line is only breaking because of the size of the window. I'm going to put some line breaks in now, and I'm going to do this using a special tag that doesn't come in pairs. It's called the break tag. BR. Let's see how it looks now. A little bit better, but the lines are too close together. I want to space out the lines of my paragraph, and I can do that using a style. The line height style. Let's see the effect. Perhaps a little bit too spaced out, but that's easy enough to change. And of course, if I change it at the top of the document where I've defined the paragraph style, it will change every paragraph within my web page. Now suppose I want to change a small part of the text within the paragraph. Perhaps I'd like the words some honey to stand out. I can do that as well. I'm going to define a style within the style tags in the head section specifically to make bits of text stand out. I need to give that style a name. I'll call this, for want of a better name, Stand Out. Notice how the name of this style starts with a full stop, indicating that it's a name I've come up with. A little bit of copying and pasting to speed things up. Right, now that I've actually defined the style, I need to somehow identify which block of text I want to use it on. And I'm going to do that using something called the span tags. I'm going to put some honey within these tags. Span slash span. On their own, the span tags don't do anything. But now I can apply my style to whatever's in between them. To apply the style, I use the class attribute within the opening span tag. In fact, there's a few places I'd like to use this particular style. Let's put it around £5 note as well. And maybe the word beautiful. Let's see how that looks. Perhaps yellow was the wrong choice of colour. But here's the beauty of it. I can very, very easily change it in one place.
wherever I've used that style, I can change it instantly. That is why we put styles in the head section of our web page. Now one more thing I want to point out is that if I'm using, for example, this style here to define the appearance of heading 1 on the web page, I don't have to have it for every single heading 1. I can override it. So for example down here, I can just use the old method which I showed you in the previous video. All of the heading 1s on my page would appear according to the style which I defined in the head section, except for this one which will have a slightly different colour. This is why these are called cascading styles. We can define them once for the whole page and they'll be cascaded across the whole page, but then we can override them as and when we need to. Give it a try yourself. See if you can come up with a nice colour scheme that works for the owl and the pussycat. I suggest you pick up some of the colours on the image that you've used. I'll tidy mine up between now and the next video.